Good morning, everybody. Well, it's the second week of Advent, and Christmas is just a few weeks away now. And this morning, I just lighted the two Advent candles, the candle of hope and the candle of love for today. I'd like to read you just a couple of verses from 1 Corinthians 13. I start in 1 Corinthians 12, right at the end, where Paul writes, And now I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I am a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that I can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrong. Love does not rejoice, do not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. And then verse 13. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. The word love is probably the most used and abused word in the English language. The word love slips out glibly out of our mouths, but what does it mean? Our lives are shaped by those who love us and by those who refuse to love us. But what is love? Every marriage is an effort to find love. Love is a mystery that you will never understand until you examine the love of God. The Bible says, God is love, and they that have, do not have love do not know God. Love is not an emotion. Love is an act of our will. It's a principle. Love is not measured by what you say. It is not measured by how you feel. Love in the Bible is measured by what you do. You're not saved by doing, but if you love, this love drives you to action. Jesus, Jesus didn't say, I was hungry and you felt sorry for me. He didn't say, I was naked and you felt shame for me, or I was in prison and you felt embarrassed for me, or I was sick and you felt sympathy for me. That's not what he said. He said, I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was in prison and you visited me. I was sick and you visited me. These are the things that make a difference. Love is what you do. The message of Christ is love measured by action. Jesus said, you are my disciples if you do whatever I ask you to do. Please read 1 Corinthians 13 as we talk about love today. Love is something that you do. Begin with this thought. Love demands action. Jesus said, you are my disciples if you do whatever I command you. A mother who loves her baby, seeing the baby running to the street after a ball in front of a speeding car, doesn't piously walk out of the front door and say to her son, Billy, will you please stop playing in the street? No. She screams at the top of her lungs, stop. She gets his attention and gets him out of the street. Anger is often love's clearest voice. A father who sees his son in the garage playing with matches near a container of, of petrol doesn't say, Oh, there he is, my domestic tyrant, who's playing with matches and petrol. No. He doesn't say that. He says, stop playing with those matches. He gets his attention immediately. The point is, there comes a time when love demands action. 
People say, I love South Africa. Do you? Do you love this country enough to take action, to be involved? Do you love this country enough to stand up against the things that are wrong? In 2016, I was at a mission congress in, in, at the seminary in Peter Maritzburg, and I was so moved to get involved again. We are doing a lot of missional work at this church, at our church. But outreach is not just about feeding people and giving clothes. Rather, it's getting involved in the issues that we would rather avoid. Salvation Army and Reverend Grootboom um, put a teddy bear in a cage and taped its mouth shut. I found myself just stopping right there. Not able to walk past that cage. We need to do something. There's so much gender-based violence in our land at the moment. There's so much violence against, against people, not just women and children, against everybody. You see, love is not what you say. Love is not what you feel. Love is what you do. And it's time for us, the people of Christ, the Christ followers in South Africa, to accept the fact that we must stand up, speak up, and act up for God, for this nation, and for the future of our children. It's time to take this nation back, back to the Bible, back to basics, and back to the God of our fathers. This works, this works, the Bible, like nothing else does. Just listen. We must do what we are. We must do what what we must do must flow from who we are. You cannot get away with what you do not have. The Bible says God is love. And if you don't have God's love, you can't give it away. 1 John 3:14 says we know that we have passed from death into life because we love our brothers. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Simply stated, without love, you're nothing. If love is lacking, we're nothing. The Bible gives us evidences of salvation. One is that we confess with our mouth that the Lord Jesus is the only Son of God. This can be imitated. But the acid test of our belief is our love for our brothers. The Bible says, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you love one another as I have loved you. You can fake your confession in Christ, but you cannot fake love. Let me tell you something. Christianity without love is just another cult. Christianity without the love of Jesus Christ is an empty, meaningless facade. The church and the world does not care what we know until they know what we care. Paul said, without love you are nothing, literally of no account, of no value junk beyond junk. Paul says, though I speak with the tongue of men, what does that mean? It means that I'm eloquent, that I'm able to speak in languages, that I've mastered them. A wife said to her husband, you don't speak very well. He said, I speak as well as you do. Weller, in fact. Our words need to match our actions. Otherwise, we're just making a noise. A cat chased a mouse through the house, and the mouse ran into the cavity in the wall and sat there and said, I wonder if the cat has gone. A few minutes passed, and he heard the dog bark. He said, well, if there's a dog out there, then there's no cat. 
And so he was feeling safe and he leapt out of the wall and as soon as he did that, the cat picked him up and took him right, looked him right in the eye and said, you've got to be bilingual. So what is Paul saying here? He says, even if I'm eloquent in every language here on earth, and I have the tendencies to say I'm something. Paul says, without the love of God, you're nothing. I can speak with prophecy and impress everybody around me. If I had the ability to do that, I would have the ability to say I'm something. But Paul says, without God's love, we're nothing. And if I understand all mystery, a mystery is something that has not been revealed at this point in time, I would have the ability to say I'm something, but Paul says, without love, say it with me, you're nothing. Do you want to do something great for God? Then be kind to his children, because God loves all of his children, even those who disagree with you, even those who go to a different church than you, even those who have a different theology than you, even those whose prophecy chart does not agree with yours. He loves all people. Folk, kindness is the language that the deaf can hear and the blind can see. It's too bad that those folks who pass out the milk of kindness always try to skin it first. There's some of you here who have, who have gone through really horrible things in your lives, um, bad marriage, you've been through a domestic scrabble, um, you've had a hateful business experience, you've had your life and your heart and your mind filled with bitterness that nothing can take out. I want you to know when you come to know Jesus and, and His love lives in your heart and soul and mind and body, he can take the reaction and the bitterness from you. He can give you the joy that is unspeakable and a peace that surpasses knowledge. He can give you a new song and he'll give you the ability to laugh again. What I'm really saying is, please try Jesus. He's the answer to your life. Learn to speak kind words. Nobody resents them. A wife said to her husband, do I look 45? He said, no, but you used to. You see, love does not put itself on display. Love has no pride. Love is needed most by those who deserve it least. Love is to love the world. To love the world is easy. To love the person next door that really behaves badly, that's a problem. He's close. He's identifiable. But the world is a long way off. Love is also never rude. Love has discipline. Anyone who teaches love without discipline is presenting to you a doctrine. Love is unselfish. It doesn't seek its own. It doesn't exist on its own way. It doesn't pursue a selfish advantage. Love doesn't seek its own. Love looks for a new way to give. And lastly, love has self-control. Say that with me as well. Love has self-control. Love is not living life with a chip on your shoulder or looking out for others that, that offend you. If you're living life with a chip on your shoulder, you're going to live one long, miserable life. Love is not quick to take offence. One mother said to her son, Son, it's time for you to get up and get dressed and go to church with me. The son said, I don't want to go to church. I don't like the people at that church. Those people don't like me. The mother said, I want you to go. He said, Give me three good reasons why I should go to church. He said, All right. First, I'm your mother and I want you to go. Second, you're 45 years old. And you need to go. And thirdly, you're the pastor. You see, a bell is not a bell until you ring it. A song is not a song until you sing it. Love is in your heart and it's put there to stay. 
Love is not love until you give it away. Some of you here today are going through life with a bitter memory of a marriage that went bad or a relationship that broke your heart and you've abandoned the love of God. And I challenge you today in Jesus' name to forget those things which are behind and plunge into the depths of the love that God has. Sing a new song and know the joy and the peace that this world can't describe as you discover the love of God. I'm not happy with the quality of love that's in my marriage and I'm asking God today to make it a quiet war zone in my house for my home to become a living citadel of the love of God. It can't happen. How many of you watching this today um, can say, I'm in that room? You can say, I'm not kind, I'm not patient, I'm selfish, I'm domineering, I live with a chip on my shoulder, I'm self-centered, and I'm asking God today to take this carnal nature of mine, let it be crucified, let me experience the love of God, such as Jesus demonstrated at Calvary. Can I see your right hand where you are? God bless you. Please join me in this prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you to heal and to restore everything that's within me, everything that's painful. Heal every memory. Heal every broken relationship, every form of bitterness. Let it leave me, please, Lord, as I receive the love of God. Lord Jesus, let every form of your love, the words that Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 13, invade my heart and soul and mind and body. In the name of Jesus, I know that I'm loved. Therefore, I can love others. And I can let that love of God rule my heart and mind and soul and body, that I may be healed. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, it's the first Sunday of the month and we will share in communion today. So if you haven't got your communion elements ready, can I ask you to pause and go and get some juice and, and some bread or a cracker and come and share in communion with me. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and when he'd given thanks over the bread, he broke it. Then he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, broken for you, because I love you. Love in action, not just words. Oh Jesus, I'm grateful. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup. When he'd given thanks over the cup, he gave it to them and said, Take and drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ has risen. And Christ will come again. And I'm grateful. Father, pour out your love on these elements of bread and wine that as we share in them today, we would really just understand how much you really love us. God, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for each and every one of us. Well, thank you that you love us when we are not lovable. Thank you that you want to love us, Lord. And so, Lord, I just pray for every person watching this today that they would experience your love in a new and fresh and dynamic way today. In the name of Jesus. 
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each and every one of you, now and forevermore. Amen. And so from my home to yours, may God bless and keep you. Amen.